Welcome back to Security Simplified. Last time, we talked about open redirect vulnerabilities and how you can prevent them from showing up in your applications. Today, let's take a deeper dive into open redirects and explore why it's so prevalent in web applications today. Sites can prevent open redirects by validating the user supplied URL used to redirect the user. They could check the URL against a whitelist of hosts and trusted URLs and reject anything that does not belong to those locations. By why are re open redirects still so common today? Let's first take a look at how URL parsing is done. Here, you can see the components of a URL. How the browser redirects the user depends on how the browser differentiates between these URL components. And the job of a URL validator is to accurately predict how the browser will redirect the user and reject URLs that will result in a redirect off-site. The most common way URL validators determine redirect URL validity is through a whitelist. They will check the host name portion of the URL to make sure that it matches a determined list of allowed hosts. That sounds straightforward, but the reality is that parsing and decoding a URL is difficult to get right. So validators often have a hard time determining the hostname portion of the URL. One source of bugs is the inconsistency between how validators and browsers decode non-ASCII characters in the URLs. For example, how should this URL be decoded? Let's say that this URL has passed URL validation and the validator has determined that example.com is, is its domain name. Several scenarios could happen. The first one happens when browsers decode non-ASCII characters into question marks. In this case, example.com becomes the part of the URL query and not part of the host name. And the browser would therefore navigate to attacker.com instead. Another common solution is that browsers will attempt to find a most alike character. For example, if this character appears in the URL like this, the validator might determine that the hostname is example.com. But the browser attempts to normalize the URL by converting the special character into a question mark, making attacker.com the hostname instead. Still, many issues arise when the validator and the browser decode the URL a different number of times. Take this URL for example. This is the URL double encoded version of the slash character. If the validator does not double decode this URL, the URL will be interpreted as this one, making example.com the host name and attacker.com the URL name. On the other hand, if the browser does not does double decode the URL, the URL will become this one. At example.com becomes the path portion of the URL and the browser will navigate to attacker.com. Another source of browser validator inconsistency is slashes. Most browsers and validators will treat backward slashes as path indicators. However, if either the browser or the validator does not implement this, the inconsistency could lead to bugs. For example, this URL is potentially problematic. If the validator treats the backward slash as a path separator, it will interpret the URL as this one. On the other hand, if the browser does not recognize the backward slash as a path separator, it will interpret the host name to be example.com backward slash attacker.com, with example being the subdomain and com backward slash attacker.com being the base domain name. Another common attack is when attackers can exploit the loopholes of the validator's logic. For example, to prevent an attack like this from succeeding, the validator might only accept URLs that ends with a domain on the whitelist. And to prevent an attack like this one, the validator determines that URLs might also start with whitelisted values. However, both of these rules can be overcome by this URL. Finally, to defeat more sophisticated URL validators, 
An attacker can combine multiple of the above vectors to defeat layered defenses. There are many more methods attackers use to defeat URL validators, and they all exploit the inconsistencies in the URL parsing behavior of modern browsers. Custom-built URL validators are prone to attack attacks like these when developers do not consider all of the edge cases. Prevent and open redirect on sites means that URL validations need to be done right for every redirect endpoint, which is why it's so hard to get right. So when validating URLs, you should use a tried and tested library for URL parsing rather than using your own regexes or parsers. And that's it for today's security lesson. See you next time.